I'm having a party. Want to come? And then she goes, I'm having me a party. And then he goes, I don't think I can come. Uh Uh-uh. It's not just any kind of party. Think I'll stay at home. Uh Uh-huh. And and on and on it goes. I've never heard you sing that before. So (laughs) that's your bar song, though? That's your karaoke song? Yeah. I would sing it all the time with Abby growing up. Oh, okay. Wait, we sang it. Were you not there? No, that was the day after I left, remember? Ah, yeah, we sang it there. I mean, I I used to sing that all the time in the car. Originally, though, I sang it not with her. I sang it with my best friend from third grade who then ended up bullying me, Mm. and we stopped Mm -hmm. being friends. But that originated because her mom used to play it in her car. The one who stole your clothes? No, that's a different girl. Oh, okay. It was bullied a lot by different women, (laughs) fortunately. So I took that song, and then my mom started playing it for me and Abby, and then me and Abby started singing it. That's nice. I like that your sunglasses match your outfit. Now I'm self-conscious that mine don't. I feel like they work. Yeah. Yeah, but like I'm wearing black and white, and then you're wearing like white and blue, and yours are like white and blue. And where mine are like brown and gold. Yeah. yeah where Where are your sunglasses? You didn't read. Didn't read the memo. I can't read. I just wanna here. Wait. Get it. Get a good crunch gone. Dance monkey dance. <laughs> well, that's a big one. Ooh. It's like those turtle videos, but you're the turtle. Well. Welcome to the revamp of the Offline TV podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode one. Um, while, while Toast gets situated, um, no, start from the top. we've been on hiatus for a little bit, but we're back. We're going to do, uh, you, you know, Jody and I are taking over as hosts and we're going to do things different around here a little bit. Okay. Oh, boy. I'm so excited. <laughs> You'll be seeing a lot of us. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hit every other week, so you can count on that instead of every three months. <laughs> Why not every week? I got shit to do, man. Like my podcast. You got podcasts? Yeah. <laughs> 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 that I've been neglecting. Episode three coming out soon. <laughs> All right. That was, okay. Well, what's what's uh what else is different here? Uh, well, we changed the look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you I like, like this. it? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like I'm getting interrogated. No. Why did you say that? Because this isn't even a couch. Like you guys get couches with my couch. I'm sitting on an OTV branded Secret Labs chair. Yeah. Which is rather comfortable. You now. get the awesome Secret Labs chair. Yeah. 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 I mean, I like it. The colors look nicer too. My sunglasses are muting everything. I don't know how it looks right now. We were maybe we'll do a special like party episode, but we uh, turned one of the lights off and it looked like a nightclub in here. So cool. Those are that'll be for the episodes where we drink. Sure, yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be cool. Um, yeah. So this is this is the new podcast. Um, you um may find some things are the same, and some things will feel different. Okay. Yeah, but um, just you know, act natural. Uh, Be comfy. I, okay. I like this dynamic more um, than a lot last podcast. I, 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 can I just talk about whatever? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. How is yours, man? Well, Jody was talking about how her third grade friend bullied her, which triggered a memory I did in high school that I try and block out. Oh, no. I had a friend in elementary school so in, in Canada. Grade nine is high school. So you're like, what? 14? Yeah, 14. Before that, I went to elementary school and had a, like, the closest friend I had was in seventh grade while I was in the eighth grade. Um, so we were friends. So when I went off to high school, he stayed in elementary mm. school at the eighth grade. And then when I was in the 10th grade, he went to my high school. Then he went to my school. And I don't know why I did this, but I just pretended like I didn't know him. And this apparently this is not like the most uncommon thing. Like other kids have done it, but I just straight up pretended like I didn't know him and ignored him. And he tried to say hi to me, and I would just like not acknowledge him and walk past him. I I don't really know why I did that. Maybe just some like kid psychological stuff. Like oh sorry man, I'm a different person <laughs> now. But um, I always felt terrible about that. Uh, How do you think he feels? Probably confused that was as to why I wasn't acknowledging him. Do you think he was like, 
man, I swear I knew that guy. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, he... He knew. He knew. So, Tim, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Wait, but you said that Tim originally bullied you? No, uh, Jody was no, talking he's about the bully. bully. Oh, <laughs> oh, you literally were just like, yeah, I don't know you anymore. <laughs> I didn't even, no, I just, yeah, I just didn't acknowledge Damn. Him Do you think that Tim just is like a hate watcher now? He watched all your shit and like, fuck you, just guys toast. Nah, we, we went to a very white college town, like the, the townies. That you were born there, yeah. you grow up there, you work there, you have kids there, you die there. Most of the people in that town are townies. So he's probably just having a good, I hope having a good life. So I don't feel too bad about what happened. Or does he even remember me? Would you ever, would you ever reach out to Hell him? Hell no. No, <laughs> no I'll not do that. I don't interact with anyone from my college or high school life, which is another thing I feel really bad about. I had two best friends in college that... I haven't kept up with and I don't know how they're doing. I'll, I'll invite them to my wedding if I ever have one. But yeah, it's been like ooh, it's been like seven years since I've been in contact with them. One of them, they're going to open up the invitation and the wife's going to be like, who's that? You're gonna, and they're going to say, I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, not the greatest track record when it comes to friendships. So, like, if you're going to invite them to your wedding, how are you going to get in contact with them? How are you going to find out where they on, live? on Facebook or email. Email? Email, that's what. Holy. I'm, I'm sure they, <laughs> they still have their emails. Like, I don't think it would be hard to reach them. Mm. Like, Facebook, probably. You guys didn't text? You just you emailed each other? Well, we would Facebook message back in the day. Like, uh, college for, for me was, like, seven years ago. Facebook was still popping. Mm. Now I'm trying to think like who I would invite to my wedding and like what the, I don't know this name is, Statue of Limitation? Limitation? Yeah. Yes. Like a friendships for that. Like what is socially acceptable? Like if I haven't talked to this person in 10 years, should I invite them to my wedding? I mean, who would you want at your wedding, right? You can invite, you can invite anyone. anyone. I would invite all my closest friends like that I, I still have like some best friends so that I text basically for holidays. Hey, think about you, happy birthday merry christmas whatever and that's it here's a challenge for you who would you say that we know of that would be invited but on the cusp like this is as far as it goes who would i invite like a friend that is the cusp like like for example sydney is someone you would invite 100 mm -hmm. percent, right and as you get further away it's like yeah maybe hmm so who's someone who you would invite, but it's like, yeah, that's as far as I'm comfortable going. Hmm. I need some time to think. You go first. Hmm. <laughs> Let me think. For example, hmm. Like I invite everyone in this house. And like one step further would be like, you know, I would invite like Peter, Peter Park. You know, that's one step further. And then, like, one step beyond that would be. Now, that's probably my, my limit. Like, Peter, you're invited. So, you're going to have, what, 10 people at your wedding? Yeah, wait, how big is your wedding going to be? Probably, like, 30 people. 30? Yeah, I'm not looking for. Like, I generally am a hater. Yeah. Yeah. So, my friends are people I don't hate. And then beyond that, I hate them. So 30 is a good, a good amount. A really small Venn diagram we're working here with. Is the 30 just friends though? Or are you including family? Like, It includes family. Wow. Okay. Like, There's 30 people from my side. Like I don't, I'm not close with my cousins or my uncles. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like brother, sister, mom, dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually feel similar to you. I'm like, my idea is I'm going to have a little, what's it called? vocation wedding destination wedding Desti what am i what am i saying i don't know i feel like that that that's a that's a zinger word yeah but i don't yeah don't count me on that um yeah basically i want to have a destination wedding so that i can have an excuse for people to not come and then be like oh sorry like yeah it's just small Do you feel like you need an excuse like no, oh i wasn't but it's more like for, it's for them mm. you know i also want it to just be like somewhere beautiful and like i can just like be on a vacation with friends um 
but I imagine a small wedding because it's for you, you know? It's not for anybody else. So interesting. I feel like with my family, there's a lot of like, not politics, but like a lot of people will feel hurt if I didn't invite them. People will absolutely feel hurt if I do not invite them. But hey, that's that's on them, man. That's on them. That's on me. My wedding. Unless you're going to pay for it. <laughs> Come all you want. Yeah, it becomes like a hard like, you know, pe- people start texting your mom and then the mom's like, I don't know, it's just the venue, there's a venue has got to cut off. You know, you start coming up with all these things with like, oh, sorry, you know, if they cancel, maybe we can get you on the list, you know. Those are all excuses. That's when you say, sorry, they don't want you there. It's their day. You can come to do the reception or whatever it's called. What is the thing after the wedding? Reception. The reception. Guys, I don't know my terminology. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think of someone yet? No. What about you, Broden? I guess like when it comes to, so basically everyone that we went to the Philippines with, right? Like those are my close friends. I would invite them to my wedding. And then anyone outside of that. Like if I'm not going to go on vacation with you, you're probably not invited. Unless I decide to make it bigger. Yeah, there was like 11 people who went with you to the Philippines. Mm-hmm. That's 11. You know what I mean? Like if I, would, if I would travel with you, you could be invited to my wedding. And then my grandparents. And my, like, you know, my mom, my dad. Best friend from sixth grade. All my friends from home. And then... Ooh, okay, wait. I have one that maybe is like for you. <clears throat> Valorant community. There's people that you've interacted with, people that you've like played games with. Anyone there who you're like, you know what? Yeah, you would, uh, I would invite. And that's the cutoff, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say Sorry, like, Valorant community. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Like, I... It depends on like what kind of wedding I'm having, I guess. Like I'm either going really close knit and I'm going on a vacational wedding, whatever, or I'm like doing it in town and like then I'll invite like a little farther reach. Like the Valorant community. Sure. That's pretty far. <laughs> Getting tens at my <laughs> wedding. <laughs> okay. How about uh how about Jason? I would invite Jason. Damn. Congrats, Jason. But not on my vacation wedding. Yeah, oh. Jason gets to come to like my other bigger wedding. Yeah, you went to you went on vacation with him in Japan. Yeah, we did. But like that Jason took- and I aren't friends yet, but we have talked about books and surfing. But like if we made it to one deeper level, maybe. <laughs> you can't tell but Jason is like fighting back his <laughs> team. Yeah. Well, this is great. I'm glad you picked Jason. Hey Jason, does Jody get an invite to your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah jason yeah, is jason. actually getting <laughs> yeah, jason. that's true if he didn't invite you to his wedding you don't have to invite him you should invite jody to your wedding just to guarantee just to your in. spot <laughs> 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 do you have a mic jason or no that's fine all right he said he said uh venue cutoffs so understandable like yeah i saw my sister go through wedding planning and it is hasslesome like you have to have the exact number of no guests and food and people always want to bring plus ones they have to account for that and there's vegetarians and stuff it's, it's a whole <laughs> those thing those damn vegetarians and also everyone tries to just upcharge a ton mm. like a lot of the venues that will rent for location stuff for like OTV videos or whatever um, when you when you rent them they'll have like the filming price which is like already kind of expensive but like sometimes affordable and then they will ha- typically have like an asterisk that says if you're going to use this for a wedding you have to let us know. And then they'll like triple the charge. No. I don't know. I want to get eloped, honestly. What is that? Like a secret wedding? Like you just like don't make a big deal about it. And then you just, yeah. You run away, get married. You have one person like see it, whatever. Like a Vegas wedding? Yeah. What is that called? Elope. No, the person that, <laughs> yeah, guys, I don't know. The person that is the <laughs> ah the pastor no the efficient i think right? it, the person that like you have to oh witness you have to have a witness oh, oh yeah that needs to be uh, a fourth, fourth person party. yes yeah. and then i would just like i don't know throw a party would you use a stranger for your witness no probably not <laughs> no where would you get eloped hawaii you know i don't know just like anywhere okay i'm just gonna eat how was that bite I'm so hungry. This is so good. That's good to hear because this podcast is sponsored by Factor, where eating better is easy with Factor's delicious ready to eat meals. What's nice is that every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. Can you believe that that delicious dish in front of you is two minutes? Crazy. 
You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day, like these Factor Wellness shots. I don't know if you can hear, but my voice is a little sick. So I am going to drink three of these right now. I love wellness shots. Wait, that was yummy. Delicious. Love these wellness shots. Two minute meals. Fill up fast with Factor's restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. They are flexible to your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is a dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash OTV50 and use code OTV50 to get, you guessed it, 50% off. That's a steal. That's code OTV50 at factormeals.com slash OTV50 to get 50% off. Let's get back into our interview with Toast. Now you guys are big, uh, big on proposal types? No. You well, to- oh, I get the ick. I get the ick. From proposals? I, yeah, okay. I, before you... <laughs> okay. Just, I hate performative romance. I love romance. Like true like true love romance, but performative romance, I understand where it's coming from, but like I just look at the ick where it's like, for example, a performative romance to me is like a public proposal that you guys have not talked about. So the girl's like, or the guy is like, what? What? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just like, <laughs> I don't know, I can't. So proposals for me are... Like it just like for example, when we were in the Philippines, we saw somebody get proposed to in this little oh this, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> right next to the pool, and they were having dinner, and I was like, "Ooh, I I don't know." Do you think that they had a good time with all these people around them, and everyone's watching them? Yeah, and like I don't know. Jody's screaming, "I can't swim! I can't swim!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Man, I hope that like we people in the pool didn't ruin their proposal." But also, like, it's just such a bad spot to even have like one of those romantic i know days. like it's so close <laughs> like, to us like i don't blame them because when you have a like when you it's booked through the hotel and when you think romantic dinner spots like secluded and then maybe there's a butler but it's right next yeah. to the public pool <laughs> <laughs> yeah terrible spot and yeah, we, we were, um, and the pool is elevated above the dinner spot. So we're all peering over like yeah. kids in a trench coat, like <laughs> witnessing this. And then we were just like laughing. And then the guy got on one knee and we're like, he's proposing. <laughs> 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 yeah it was a funny sight seeing like five people lined up at the rim like oh what's <laughs> happening here and, you know he, they, they, she seemed like she enjoyed it and she said yes so good for them i saw them at the uh, breakfast buffet the next day and she looked happy oh wishing them the best <laughs> <laughs> so is he like what about a like there's no camera to film your reaction um, you're out in like the Italian Riviera. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. I just like don't want to put too much pressure on it. I, it just doesn't matter to me. Like, I think it can be an absolutely like, beautiful moment, but I just think there's so much pressure already. Or like as a girl growing up in a very small town, there was a lot of emphasis put on like marriage and babies. and <laughs> Yeah. And then once I moved away and stopped being a townie i was like oh yeah dear god yeah um i just think about when girls used to make pinterest pages of their wedding and whatnot and it, i think it's like great you can't absolutely look forward to that and romanticize it but i think it's like when it's your only goal and it's like this only thing that you think about i think it puts a lot of pressure on the day and puts a lot of pressure on like making it be perfect when it's just just another day and it can be beautiful but i think like the culture around it has been really i don't know i think it just puts a lot of pressure which can create negativity around it do you have any problem being proposed to toast no nah, will make my life a lot easier i think we should normalize women proposing to men mm-hmm. you know it's hard putting yourself out there well it's not you all the time <laughs> wait, wait, well i mean if you're proposing you, you guys have definitely talked about marriage you know you're not <laughs> She's not gonna say no. Well, well, I mean, really, realistically, if you realistically, from what I've seen, is even if the girl wants to say no, 
she'll say yes to not like embarrass the guy and then later on like talk about it yeah which i think is fair because like if you guys are in a you know a public space or very romantic space it's a big deal it's it can be very hard to say no mm-hmm. and that's a problem with society that we have conditioned people that like saying no is a bad thing mm-hmm. so what i've seen is like people would say yes and then later on like in private kind of walk back on that a little bit I love you've created the this mental image for me where like guy proposes to girl in a big public area. She's like, oh my God, yes. And he's just like, yes, <laughs> yes, I did it, yes. The best day of his life. Cut to like 24 hours later, he's sulking. <laughs> <laughs> She's just giving him, him the news. Yeah, that happened to my friend in high school. Um, but it was the prom, not a marriage. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> but like he liked this girl and he worked up the courage to finally ask her and i think she was so blindsided it's like oh yeah i'll Aww. go and then later sent him like a message Aww. i think it'll be fun if we all go as a group and it's like bro yeah like yeah like i don't blame the girl it's like so much pressure in that moment to not want to hurt someone's feeling but yeah it's it's rough out there that made me think about my high school mm-hmm. and everybody did what I assumed you should do for proposals, which is, hey, do you like you text? Hey, would you like want to go to the dance together? And then they do a grand ask. Like I would. Oh, it's yeah. set up ahead of time. Aggressive high school, it feels like. No, it was like, <laughs> oh, I'm friends with Graydon. Graydon, you want to go to prom together? Sure. And then he'll come up with like some ask. Or whatever. Like everyone knew ahead of the time who was going with who. Huh. Yeah. I have a question. Hmm. Do you, and I know you don't speak for all women, but a common like thing that boys go through is like this idea of like when you kiss a girl, if you ask, you're kind of like, ooh, ooh, pussy. But <laughs> what? Wait. The, 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 what? I swear to God, this is what they, this is what I was taught when I was like in high school. Like, okay. Okay. Like asking is good because like you confirm it, but yeah. at the same time, like the idea is like, oh, you're asking. Like you should be able to tell. Um, no, that, at least I don't. I don't know. You I never heard of that sentiment? S- no. Interesting. Yeah, I've def- I'm aware of this yeah. for sure. Yeah, a lot of wait. Boys. Then you'll be called a <laughs> pussy. Not a pussy, but oh. it's like you're kind of it's a like beta ish. Yeah, it's looked down upon. Uh, it's like oh, you had to ask. You couldn't just tell. Okay, I've never heard like you couldn't just tell. Like I, I've never heard of that. I guess I, I have heard like the sentiment of like. I don't think I've heard pussy or like anything like that. I'm trying to think back in high school because it is like high school. It, it, it feels like boys are expected to like study like the signs of like oh she looked at me oh she put her or hair behind her like, ear as a sign of confidence. It's like mm. you know. Ooh. Um, <laughs> another, I think a more extreme version is that you're getting like you're making out with a girl. It's like hey can we have sex? Mm. Do you want to have sex? It's kind of like you're supposed to pick up on nonverbal cues, like move your hand in places and she like pushes away. I see what you mean. So like kissing is, I would say like the lightest version of that. It's like you can see the signs and then do you just go for it or do you say, hey, is it okay if I kiss you? Which is a very gentleman behavior, yeah. but kind of beta-ish. No, okay, well, okay. <laughs> you're feeding into... <laughs> I was, I... I I should preface this by saying I was an incel growing up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Truly? Nah, but oh, I, I, con- I consumed like incel culture, like teaching, but I was always aware like, okay, this is a little like dangerous, so I didn't like steer into it, but I think it does prey on like young boys growing up. Like, yeah. The insecurity about yeah. women and it's like oh maybe i should just trust this guy who's telling me these things and i think that's where a lot of guys that kind of split off into like the manosphere toxic masculinity or they become like a little more self-aware it's like okay some of the things they are saying might have some element of truth but it seems like they blame the women more than like their own circumstances yeah you you, you come to a crossroad of do i blame the women or do i just <laughs> you know try and work around like some of these things society has set up Mm. i do think it's okay i have two tangents the first one we're gonna go on to say is like i think it's crazy that there are such influence or men are so influenced by men 
when this entire conversation kind of comes down to women? Like, wouldn't you just consume more content from women talking about like their experiences with men to then understand them more? Which I would say is what you see when men are generally a little more well-rounded. Like they're like, oh yeah, like I had a sister or like a mother or whatever I was really close to or I'm consuming content, whatever. But a lot of the times they don't because I think like you try to go for relatability and like you find content like creators who are men and, or like whatever, whoever's talking about it on a podcast kind of thing. Cool, great. That was my other one. <laughs> well, to, to <clears throat> give even more context around there, I don't like it's not just like a guy's thing where like, you go back to your buddies and you're like, hey, we made out. And they're like, did you, did you have to ask? It, it's like a, um, uh, how do I put it? It's the, the mentality around it is almost like the girl will be not offended, but like will think lesser of you for asking. Oh, not guys. Like got some it. girls will say, ooh, that gave me the ick. Yeah. In this <laughs> okay. day and age. Let me, let me really, okay. Me, well, I think it's really different in high school. Like I think high school is just, it's a terrible place, man. That shit sucked. <laughs> I think it's like super toxic, not only just for women, but also for men, like our boys and girls. Like, I just think, I think about my values in high school and how negative my self-talk was and how, like, I felt like a pick me girl because that was kind of what was pushed. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like all girls were competing against other girls. It never felt like girls were trying to like cheer other girls on in high school. It was terrible. Um, so I can definitely understand in high school, like if a guy said that, how girls would be like, oh, ew. But then you grow up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, like truly, I'm like, I, I, if a guy said that to me now, I would not think anything of it. I also think it's like, depending on how you're asking, like, are you just asking that because you know, like, it's like, I think if you're asking it because you're like, oh, I'm supposed to, like, me, me, me. and then it's going to come off weird because you're like, I kiss you. But like there's if you're like genuinely like coming from a place of like, oh, I like care about you. I want to make you feel safe. Then it comes off as like, mm, nice. You know, mm. have you ever asked, hey, can I kiss you? I think once. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, I just read the situation. <laughs> yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> so now I was having this conversation with Michael. I was, I, like before he said anything, I'm like, yeah, I. I would never ask because, you know, that would be too much of a bitch move. And then Michael's like, yeah, no, I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, like, you, you should ask generally. If but you don't know, like, you should ask. Yeah, I think, like, I do think it's pretty clear mm -hmm. when someone really wants to kiss you. But, like, if it's unclear you and you don't know, there's no harm in asking. Yeah, like, I think the time that I asked, it was like, I really did not know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like I, there was probably a point in in that uh like date where I was like, "Are we? Should I just like leave? Like, is this not going well?" Mm. <laughs> oh, did she say yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So it was just a very hard to read person. Oh, yeah. Asking worked out. I also want to say this disclaimer: boys don't go out there kissing girls because I said not to ask. Please ask. You should. The only time you wouldn't ask is. She's like pursing her lips, like, mm. <laughs> if you're asking at that point, God save you. <laughs> but that's essentially the idea. Like, if all the signs, the green lights are there and you feel like you have enough like confidence to go for it, go for it. But if things are like just progressing normally, don't just fucking go in for it. Cause uh, yeah, no, you would get in trouble for that. And that would just be disrespectful for a girl. I want to go back to the pick me thing. Yeah. Though. Okay. Go ahead. That's interesting. What, what their link? I feel like, High school definitely like phrase that culture of girls against girls, but especially in the gaming slash streaming mm. scene. And I feel like I see it a lot with like some of these like newish Valorant girl streamers or uh, league streamers, where it happened a long time ago, like eight years ago, where girls are essentially compared to each other all the time. Like the second a girl shows up, a popular content girl, content creator shows up, it's like, oh, how does she compare? against this other girl creator and a lot of the sentiment back then was the girls were rarely friends with each other real like really but on the outside like they kept up appearances did you ever feel that in gaming um actually i don't feel it okay i can only talk about my own sentiment so like in high school i really felt like a pick me where like mm, i shied away from like girly girl things because 
guys would talk so down about girly girl things like you would hear them say that or like oh she like does her makeup puts an effort me but really like they just want to see you look effortlessly beautiful um kind of thing and so i would shy away from like girly things and i would like view all women around me as like a competitor and i would, was oftentimes really jealous like i just remember growing up with just like such envy and negative feelings but really it's just like a projection like i'm really just insecure about myself um but a lot of those insecurities did stem from like male validation in the gaming space in particular i think i just joined the scene far later in my life like I can imagine if I started streaming when I was 15, dear God, save me. I don't think I would have, I don't know what I would have done. I think I would have grown really toxic. But I started at the age of what? I was like 19 and I'm what, 26? So I just came to the space really with a different mentality. Like at that point I was I was over that. And I, I don't know, like I grew to love women a lot. Um, so in the gaming space in particular, like I haven't felt that, I guess, that, I, well, I don't view women as competitors in the gaming space, but I do think that people compare women a lot, but also like, I think they compare men a lot. Like, I think it happens to everyone, but also we we're in such a male dominated space. So we're inevitably going to be compared a lot more to really specific creators. Mm. But I don't know if it's like, mm. I don't know if it's ill-intended. And I'm not sure. I feel like now, though, like all the girls that I meet are really, for the most part, loving and like want to cheer other women up. Have you noticed differently? How spicy do we get on this podcast? I think however comfortable you are sharing. Uh, hmm. I think the one of the things in our circle, like we very much like like have to push this like publicly push this idea that all the women love each other Mm. almost to a point where it's kind of like it's reaching a point like oh you're not like leaving likes you're not like commenting positively on like every single girl's story like you have to do that like it's almost like too much positivity Mm. um is what i've seen uh and it kind of like alienates the girls that maybe don't do that all the time Interesting. like this idea like oh you gotta support women you gotta support women um that's one thing i noticed like you're saying that you've noticed women in the scene will like comment on people things that they like j- don't like like yeah. they oh and then they're like like sometimes they're just like whatever about it, which is I would say I'm whatever about like ninety percent of my friends post and ten percent say oh I like that I'm gonna leave a like I'm gonna comment, but they would see something that they're whatever about it, but feel this need to like oh I should leave a comment like oh I should like it, uh, but maybe I'm just projecting, but that's <laughs> that's look, wait, or everyone are just really positive <laughs> all the fucking okay. time. Let me I actually have never. F- felt obligated i can only speak on my behalf right? have you ever felt obligated to do anything in the streaming scene where you don't really want to for public appearances absolutely wait absolutely mm. yeah but i'm not like like when it comes to social media that's only on live stream when i'm like ha ha <laughs> i love it here <laughs> whereas like on social media if i'm leaving a comment i honestly like I might not like the person, but I might like what they're doing or I might be rooting for them to like, I don't know, create whatever the hell they're doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Like I want to bring eyes to that. I don't, but I might not like them as a person. I guess I view as two different things. Mm-hmm. Or like, cause if I'm not liking someone in the scene, it's either because you've done something that I know behind the scenes, which I'm like, ooh, <laughs> Ooh, I'm far, far away from you. And generally those people I'm not leaving like something on because I'm like, Ooh. but then if I just find you annoying, like, okay, whatever, you're annoying. And I also like what you're doing. Cool. Cheers. Sorry. I've been on, I'm not sure if you guys use Twitter a lot, but it's been pushing right wing ideals on me <laughs> and I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I can, can you, can can you give it. me some examples? Um. So one thing I noticed a lot that, uh, Honestly, all political parties or even marketing 
do, like men versus women, Democrats versus Republicans. See, even though it's shit I'm talking about right now, it's like, those you didn't used to talk about stuff like that. It's because I'm on Twitter so much and I'm just consuming <laughs> all this content. Uh, which is like, oh yeah, women behave like this, or men behave like this. Uh, it's it's like, here are immigration, I see videos of like, immigrants at the border like oh this is ruining america i'm just like watching these videos like is it <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it is there's a lot of people angry but look at all these comments about it like we should do something and then i realized like what the fuck am i doing mm -hmm. like, why am i consuming these videos but um what i notice is it almost seems like it's a like a pendulum of beliefs because in our era like our community we're very like progressive and like left-leaning ideals i would say like very safe very like women's rights and then i see almost a shift with the rise of people like um that andrew tate guy for example like being able to create this mass legion of guy followers like oh yeah like you should treat women like mm. this you should like try and make money like your value as a man is defined by this and he's like super popular but I think he's super popular is because there are like this large audience of males looking for someone like mm -hmm. him. And I think that's possible because like for a while, like most of the media, the media, you know, <laughs> big pharma, <laughs> like promoted a, like an all circle more progressive styles, styles mm -hmm. of thinking. And there was no media for them to consume so as soon as like someone like andrew tate shows i was like yeah i like what this guy's saying so now nah, i need to get off twitter it's the i think twitter has gotten incredibly negative i remember after they updated it so you all have a for you page or whatever mm -hmm. which i swear like is based off of who what who you're following and what they're looking at or something i just saw someone die i saw someone get shot and i was like what the fuck like why is this on twitter why is this real? and then i was like this is on tenzin's free page yep. this is why, I on my say, fucking free page. why is this <laughs> oh, here oh that's how it works <laughs> i want to say generally like generally algorithms like for tiktok is like if your friends are liking something or they follow something or whatever it's going to be put onto your like your free page which is why sometimes i get whack-ass shit on my tiktok <laughs> and i'm like i know someone in the friend group is watching something crazy right now but twitter for you page also i don't think it's just like algorithm because i get such wild shit on that it is really like they're just really um one-sided takes and mm -hmm. opinions and like everyone is up in arms and i'm like it's just not black and white like that i don't know tiktok and twitch and twitter all i don't know everything's just getting weirder and weirder as the days pass tiktok honestly i haven't really opened in months mm. and i feel so much better mm. <laughs> like sometimes you guys will send me stuff and i'll open it just for that and then immediately close it like i have like whatever like the 99 plus notifications and i'm like not opening those no, i'm gonna get sucked into this black hole yeah it does feel like a black hole i love using tiktok like youtube though i love going on tiktok and looking at videos but i don't like doom scrolling see that's interesting i've never thought to be like oh i'll like search it on tiktok mm -hmm. so i didn't either until another girl was like hey you should try looking that up on tiktok i was like oh huh, okay and i love it because I'm like, yeah, I don't want to have to skim through a 10 minute YouTube video to find the shit I'm looking for. I'm just like simply trying to like find my thing and be out. So whenever I'm like playing a new agent in Valorant, for example, I'm like, show me a 30 second clip on how to play this. Video. Great. Done. I'm, and now I'm in the game. Because mm, you expect it to be shorter form. It is always shorter form. Got it. Yes. Perfect. Actually. Okay. I take that back. Actually. Um, I saw, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, the documentary or docu-series that came out, Quiet on Set. Mm-hmm. Um, Nickelodeon was going <laughs> Oh, bad yeah. I, I don't know yeah. enough about it. I just know a little bit. There's giant poles in my way of the TV. Basically, it's it talks about like um, Nickelodeon's practices while filming all these kids shows. Okay. And a lot of it is... Um, the like executive producer is this guy called Dan Schneider, and everyone's kind of coming out and calling him a creep and all this stuff. Um, and Drake Bell of Drake and Josh um, was on one of the episodes and um, uh, spoke about uh, essay and very dark things that happened on set. Um, and that was something where I saw like a snippet on Twitter 
And then I was like, well, I need to see more of this. How do I see more of this? And then searched it on TikTok. And then TikTok was giving all of the, like, the whole story there. I'm surprised it took so long. Because even like eight years ago, you would see memes about Dan Schneider. Like they call him Dan Schneider, hold her tighter. Like what? people were talking about this eight years ago, just oh, on wow. internet forums. And yeah, now it's getting revealed. And the whole Drake Bell, like I haven't seen anything off it, on it. But, like, I know the last time he was in the news, he was arrested for... Yes. he He's had a bit of a troubled past himself. Pretty much what he went through at Nickelodeon probably ruined his life and yeah. made him, like... Because it also happened to Amanda Bynes as mm. well and a lot of child stars. And, yeah, no, it looks, looks, sounds, sounds like a terrible time for everyone. Well, just, like, even... Even like what I said before, like if I started streaming at the age of 15, I think I would have ruined my life type thing. Um, I cannot imagine what it is like to be whatever, 10 to 15 and be a child star. Like I, I remember watching a clip of Miley Cyrus going through one of her schedules and she's like 15, 16 at the time. It starts at seven and it, she had like seven interviews in one day and all I'm like, holy shit. Like, I I don't know. <laughs> I think it just changes you. Yeah. Well, so, but on top of that, though, like the, the Drake Bell situation is like, imagine um, who, who's someone that you would interact with consistently when you're streaming? Like, say, a, like a Twitch partner manager, maybe. Okay. Are, you, are you kind of in constant interaction or like? Here and there. Imagine that person who is like on your team, supposed to be on your side, is constantly trying to like get you in private rooms where like it's just the two of you and you're young and you're you don't young know any better and yeah that's what was happening with drake um and it turned out like a lot of other people in that space yeah so is that man what where is he now is he not in a place of power so he, he uh i'm assuming he i don't know how deep we want to get into this but uh <laughs> um Drake Bell, I guess, is from Newport Beach. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> um, basically, uh, the the um, abuser was like sentenced and is a like public child uh, or a um, offender. sex offender. Yeah. Um, when so was he in- when Drake was like fourteen, um, his girlfriend's mom at the time realized something is up here. Like, why is this? Why do you have a relationship with this man? Um, oh my God. Got the police involved. They got him arrested. Oh. He was sentenced and everything. But his sentencing was for like, I think, 16 months. And then he actually booked a job with The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody <gasps> right after. Um, granted, afterwards, Disney realized, like, whoa, what the fuck's going on? And like, okay. cut him out. But like, it is crazy that he got another job. Oh my God. Oh my god. Yeah. Is that I remember someone talking about oh god, clips about Ariana Grande and I can't remember. I don't remember it. But is that the same guy? Is that the same like Dan Schneider, yep. <sighs> yeah, pretty much what anyone a fucking who creep went through the Nickelodeon stuff. And a lot of people are just wondering like why did some people come on and say something? Why are some people keeping quiet? There's a lot I mean... of conspiracy stuff. Janet Mc yep yeah released like uh a book but hers was just shitting on her dead mom mm. like it's titled i'm glad my mom mm-hmm. died yeah i was telling how like her mom like just pushed her like it seemed like her mom would be like yeah yeah you know go spend time with that guy it might help you kind of deal but in her book too she mentioned how uh she was offered hush money like they were like hey we canceled sam and cat and that was her show with ariana grande and she's like oh cool all right and they go, yeah. And um, they want to give you $300,000. <laughs> She's like, okay, what's the catch? And they're like, just don't talk about your experience. Like, oh, that's hush money. No. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I definitely think like it's so scary to come out and talk about it. And some people are really receiving and empathetic of that, that kind of situation. And some people are really not like, it's such a tender topic and I feel like it's so, it's something that is so vulnerable 
that when you do talk about it, it's like you have, kind of have to relive a lot of the feelings you went through. And I can't imagine like the internet is no kind place. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I could understand why some people wouldn't come forward because like, that's just a lot. You got to like read all these comments about you. And now the news is talking about you. It's like, you kind of just want to let it be in the past sometimes I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It just gets messy. Yeah. yeah. But it's also just like, I really, really look up to the people who have the courage to come forward and talk about it because then it does bring awareness to it. But I cannot believe it has, I cannot believe like he got a job in 16 months or whatever. I don't yeah. know. That is absurd to me. So is he in jail? Like where is, what's he doing? No, I believe he just lives in LA now. Shut up. <laughs> There is no way. Yeah. The the guy that you're looking for is Brian Peck, not not Dan Schneider. Yeah. Wait, Brian? Uh, no relation to Josh Peck. Uh. <laughs> Who's Brian Peck? Right. He's he's the guy that was sentenced. He he worked closely with Dan Schneider. He was a um So they're just a bunch of creeps together? He was a dialogue coach for lots of kids in the industry. Um, there's photos with, of him with like Leonardo DiCaprio and like other stuff. So now people are because of this Drake thing, thinking like, oh, did he pull stuff with Leonardo? No, like Leo DiCaprio? Did he pull stuff with this other oh kid? Oh my god! So Dan Schneider is just like what? I don't, you know, I don't even know. Fuck these guys. I don't care. <laughs> That's crazy to me. Yeah, I'm surprised Disney. He reportedly resides in Los Angeles. Just lives his life. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Oh my god! I'm really surprised Disney hired him back because, like, Disney now is like with Jonathan Majors or uh, James Gunn. Like, the second something comes up, it's like fired, yep. fired, leave. Yep. Um, because it's like a giant empire now, and you can't have anyone that are getting into trouble. Wow! Um, wow! Yeah, crazy thing. He was hired back. I think that was just like they did not do a good screening and then when they finally did they were like oh my god we need to get rid of him right now and they ended up like i think scrubbing him from the episode like they totally replaced him and he ended up being like a voice so he wasn't on set luckily but yeah wow wow so scary to uh to segue from that dark topic um yeah where are we going everyone want to pull out their blade Sorry, I didn't bring mine. I didn't know it was Blade Day. Oh. That's weird. I guess we can't do the bit then. I guess we'll just put it I'll back. I'll do it next time. Leave mine there. Is that the one from the fruit shoot? Yeah, it's getting a little corroded. Yeah, same. It's a little juices. rusty from the fruit wow. juice that we must not have cleaned off. It's a good machete, though. It's a good one. You can you can harm someone with it. Yeah, yeah if needed. Have you ever thought about our house is probably equipped with so many weapons we could defend ourselves pretty well? Hmm. We have talked about it. Uh, I would use my shiny cube. That thing would impale <laughs> someone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like if I chuck that at someone, they'd be like, eh, oh, dead. Like samurai sword there, machete. There's a scythe in the corner over there. You got the cube. I think there's a room with a bunch of knives over there. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are we doing over here? <laughs> Are you guys fight or flight? Like, I think it was put to the test when the bears showed up. Oh, I'm I'm flight. I'm leaving. Well, I'm I. If you watch that video back, I don't know if I'm in it, but I actually like. I'm like, no, I will have nothing to. I I am not testing it. I'm like going far, far away. I was in the far back. Okay, what if John had to fight the bear, and your choice is to help him or run? I will help him. My immediate like my body just went like. Broden's no. fighting the bear, <laughs> and you're gonna be the difference maker. Uh, but you put yourself at risk of grievous injury. I think I will always help. Like, I feel like I, my body's like ready to fight right now. Like, it's like going through the idea. Like, I think I would have to help if like I, I know them and love them. I think it, oh, I guess if it's someone that I love, yes. <laughs> but I was going to say, if it's like kind of a freak thing where like, ooh, aliens have dropped down. It very much depends on my spatial like, if I'm right next to them, it's not like I'm going to try to run. It's like, I'm in this. Let's go. If I'm, like, like at the other end of the football field, I don't need to go there to fight. I'm kind of already out of the situation. Maybe I walk away. Yeah, it's one of those things that you never know what you're going to do until you are put into that situation. Like, if you can save a life at the risk of your own, would you do it? I don't know. 
I have a lot of nightmares about this. And so I feel like I've lived it. Mm -hmm. Because like in your dream, right? You don't know it's a dream. So like I'll be in like terrible, I don't know, situations, concert or whatever. And I'm generally trying to run. But if somebody does get caught, I'm always like, (sighs) you know, like begrudgingly like, no, I have to help them. Try it. And then I usually die. But wake up. Like if it's a, um, let's say it's like a zombie hallway situation where it's like five of us are running and then like door slams open and the zombies there. Ah, I'm turning around, push them off. Go on, everyone, push them off. Let's go. If it's like we're already at the end and they're down here and mob is starting to get at them, maybe their time has come. Here's the question. <laughs> well, it's also like, what can you do yeah. in that situation? <laughs> let's say they're running, but they're so far behind. And you have to close the door so the zombies don't get in. But you also have to close it on them. I could never. Wait, I actually could never. Even knowing the zombies will come You think the zombies... Or like I would have to like... It would really depend. Okay? There's so much in this situation. So for example, they're running. If there's like a little like two feet behind them, there's a chance we have to try. If they're like, close the door, I'm not going to make it big. Okay. Oh, no, they're screaming open. Okay, <laughs> I have, like, if there's an kill actual me. chance, like, I don't think I could close that door. I couldn't close the door. I would have to look away. Like, I couldn't even be the one that makes a decision. I would wait until the very end. And this is assuming we're not going to help them, right? Like, we're kind of in the doorway. Yeah, we're like, just waiting. You, you got this. You got this. <laughs> oh, we had this question at the Philippines event. Like, if you get bit by a zombie, would you say something? To your friends. Yes. And we all voted. I don't understand. <laughs> okay, we actually had this conversation in the back. Yeah. Me, Broden, Sydney, Sean, John all had the conversation while you guys were in the first meet and greet. And basically, I was like, if I get bit, I want you guys to just chain me up in a corner and let my last moments be with you guys. And then whatever happens to me afterwards happens. Like, feed me, to the, whatever. I don't care. But just, like, put me away. Let me, let me be with you guys in my, you know, the people that I love. And then I'll, like, become a zombie. Okay, what if it's a group of strangers and you don't know, like you don't know them that well just yet. Like you've met up with this band of survivors, you guys been surviving together for a week and then you get bit. Well, <laughs> well wait, why wouldn't I tell them? Hey, like, another, well, I let, guess- <laughs> let's say you saw just a week before someone said, hey, I got bit guys. And then they're like, bam, bam, bam. Ah, I see. Um, I guess I would preface with like, Hey guys, don't shoot. <laughs> I, I'm gonna leave. I'm just gonna let you guys know I got bit. <laughs> okay. I and think I, I like, think you get killed there though. Huh. There's I feel like there's someone in the group who goes Fuck better, you. better yeah, to get rid of you now and later. I see. Yeah. Can't then take I would the bite chance. him and then I would say, Hey guys, <laughs> don't <laughs> shoot. <laughs> We're gonna leave now. <laughs> oh, that's so smart. Just bite someone before you say something. <laughs> be like, hey, both of us. <laughs> I don't know if I. You wouldn't tell us. I don't. I wouldn't make it a danger for you guys. How would you prevent that? You're gonna lock yourself in the room, right? Right on a whiteboard on the outside. Hey, I'm bit. Don't come in. I guess it really depends on when I, I think you guys will shoot me on the spot. Why do you think we're gonna shoot you on the spot? It's the zombie apocalypse that changes. I people. don't think we're gonna shoot you on the spot. It changes people. Why can't they just chain you to a little pole for a little bit until you turn? Can you guys keep me alive until you find a cure? Uh, that's, that's, okay. okay it's wait, this got... has been done in The Walking Dead. I swear. Yeah. Wait, wait, here's a question. Are zombies immortal? It uh, depends on the fictional work. Um, and sorry, I, when I say immortal, I mean like, do they need to eat to stay alive? Or like, un- whatever they are. Wouldn't they just be... Mm, what do zombies survive off of? Meat? Brains, blood, <sighs> meat. Is it well, I guess see, it depends. Is it, it really meat or is it brains? <laughs> or is it, yeah, it depends. It depends. The, yeah. <laughs> hey, can you look up if the Walking Dead had that? I swear somebody was tied to a pole oh, when yeah. they were a zombie and the they kept them alive. Daughter of the governor is kept alive um in oh, his wow. basement. Great memory, dude. I, yeah, I was I, a big Walking Dead fan before they <laughs> turned the whole series to shit. So like, yeah. Because what I'm curious is like if you locked someone up in your basement, let's say, and left them there for eight months without feeding them or doing anything for them, does the zombie just stay zombie there? Like, hey, I'm good. (laughs) I'll wait. 
I just doubt there's a cure for the zombie apocalypse, okay? Like if you're a zombie, there's there's no comeback from that. You're basically brain dead. So then if you were to come back, you wouldn't be yourself again. Wait, what was that show that everyone hyped up? It was zombie. It's a video game. I can't remember. We all really liked it. Oh, The Last, Last of Us. Us yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. The second episode or something where the guy... It was really sad. It was a great love story. We all cried. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that guy. The guy who like crazy prepared. That one's fun because I like that it's like fungal. Like they kind of change it. Oh, yeah. I saw. So it's kind of like based off the idea that parasites can take over your brain and control it. And I yeah. saw this in person uh, once and it was like the most shocking thing. Uh, me and my mom were just like chilling on this like Taiwanese mountain and there's like a river that all the kids are swimming in so we took a dip in the pool and there was a praying mantis like in the water like kind of drowning my mom like just picked it up and like put it on land and the praying mantis turned around and threw itself oh into God. the water again like trying to drown itself yeah. and it was like kind of freaky and then we observed it and as it stayed in the water a long parasitic worm came out of its essentially butt and like slid it out and like went Ugh. into the water mm -hmm. which is what they do they control the host mm -hmm. to drown themselves Whoa. so that they can like they grow up in the body but they need water later on and it was like the freakiest thing because i s heard about it and i just never expect to see it in person mm. that is true like I've, I've learned so much about it in biology but i've never seen it in person it was freaky because like Ooh. it's literally killing itself because it's being controlled by this parasite in its body that was kind of sick yeah i think that's why people kind of like the last of us is like a more scientific realistic, realistic yeah. take on it not a fan of the actress though so i'm gonna come out and say it a lot of people are praising her acting i think her acting is Mediocre. Speaking about that, Avatar The Last Airbender had some <laughs> not so great acting. Ooh, I haven't seen Avatar The Last Airbender. I honestly don't want to. I like love the Avatar The Last Airbender. And so I just like don't want, I don't want to taint it, you know? It's just not great. And I don't want to perpetuate like bullying child stars. Like it's not their fault. It's really like they're not great actors but i would say it's more the directors and the showrunners fault for putting them in that position it's like an nba team like if they put a like a high school five foot seven kid on the on the on the stage it's like is it the kid's fault no not really like they just weren't ready for it so and a lot of the time too child actors are just the way they're directed is okay copy me <gasps> and then they do mm. it it's like great they do what I did. We got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also think it's probably hard too because Avatar, like they're probably advertising it towards children mm -hmm. and children would really like it. I'm yeah. assuming I haven't watched it. But all of the people who love Avatar now are, we're grown. Adults. Yeah. yeah. So it's like different demographics of, of it's, like it's intended just audience. It's so hard to like, it's an IP that is, you're setting yourself up for failure in a way mm -hmm. to try to remake what's already perfect yes um i actually i this is going to sound really prestigious but when the first uh or not prestigious um pretentious um when the first live action movie came out um i went into the theater and it was the first movie that i was like i i could walk out of this mm. Mm. um and like seven minutes in i took my phone out and just took note of everything i would do differently <laughs> if i directed the movie um, and I actually landed on, um, I would not try to recreate the animated series. I would make a live action version of like right after that or a period mm, after or some sort of different content. world building where, you know, the, the IP is already loved and the world building is set. And now we're exploring a different mm. like mm -hmm. band of characters mm -hmm. in this world because it's already set up so perfectly. I think that's what you guys gotta do, Nickelodeon. Or just leave it. Let's not touch it anymore. You know, let's just. <laughs> no, I mean, I want more Avatar content. <laughs> I want more, but just like, you did Aang perfectly. Mm. Do something else, and if you want, like, I'll help you. Sure. Now, after what you said about Dan Schneider and what they did back then, <laughs> mm. 
I think yeah. those are different camps. Right. <laughs> I, I always feel like when it comes to big network like them, like if you criticize them for like one thing, they'll remember. Yeah. Oh man, that thing happened to you and I recently. Wait, which one? What? Maybe get ready to cut all of this, but <laughs> we were gonna go watch a movie as a house for an advanced premiere of a movie that we're all excited for. Yeah. Yeah. And what then happened? we put in a list of all the attendants. Yep. And then they said, actually, these two are not allowed. These but two. You two. Uh, yeah, Us two. Specifically me and specifically <laughs> Broden. And then we came with Game of Okay. What did we say? <laughs> what do we what do me and Broden have in common? That would have pissed off a major movie network so bad oh that we are blacklisted from attending a premiere. Do you do so you don't know? I don't know. You can't no idea. ask? No idea. I don't know. We tried asking, they're like, we can't. Like, <gasps> there's not like that would eat me alive. I mean, I talk a lot of shit though. Like for me, I understand. Like, okay. I talk shit on the daily on my stream. It's so funny because like recently I had a Pokemon sponsor. And they're like, yeah, we're going to sponsor you even though, like, uh, for the premiere of a game, you, like, talked a lot of shit. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I was just, like, I didn't mean it. I love Pokemon. I, play. I mean, I'm just so passionate about the game, which I am. I love you, Pokemon. It's just because I care so much. <laughs> but um, I had that happen. I had, I, I lost, uh, just going to air all this out, honestly, a One Piece sponsor. Oh, at some no. point because I criticized not even One Piece I criticized another game and I lost a um, huh. uh, sponsor from a VR company because I said the first thing I'm going to do with this goggle is watch porn mm. <laughs> um, so mm. yeah like with this I don't remember saying anything about that movie or a movie in it's like roster but I wasn't Super surprised. But I was surprised Broden was on that list. Yeah. Yeah, man. I <laughs> tried to, I tried to cover my ass. Well, maybe because we did a video together and we criticized the same movie. Mm. That's the only thing I can see. Like, because we talk about movies a lot, like yeah. on camera, off camera. And maybe we just. I don't, I don't want to be associated with these two. I really like this franchise. <laughs> I actually want to. I, I love this franchise so much that now I'm rethinking this. Well, I don't think we talked about this franchise at all. I think it was something else, right? Yeah, we've never talked about Now this. everything isn't safe, you know? <coughs> now That's I cannot talk saying. to you guys about anything in the movie genre ever. <laughs> I love Avatar The Last Airbender. I didn't even watch live action, but maybe I would love it. Oh, shit, we're never going to get the Avatar sponsor because I just talk shit about the actress. See, this is why but, you can't... But I didn't. I didn't. This is <laughs> why the left-wing media just won't work, right? <laughs> like, everything is just so safe space. And that's why you we need to, like... When you, when you go the other way which is why like, again something I noticed even with like gaming streamers like um, happened the most prominently with uh, sorry I'm not gonna derail this on the right wing rabbit hole <laughs> cool I'm just gonna delete Twitter man. I need to get off that app but Honestly, yeah, yeah. I, uh, we actually thought about calling this podcast like derailed or something just uh -huh. cause like we love doing what that. is this podcast called you if you didn't do your homework I feel like we shouldn't tell you it's not my fault. I asked for a brief and they sent it to me. I just never opened it. You didn't bring your sunglasses. You no didn't bring your machete. blade. He doesn't even know the name. You're just going to stay not in the know. When I was a kid, I would get upset and I would just go into silent treatment, especially against my mom. But she wouldn't budge. And one time we were eating dinner and I just started crying. And my dad, my brother's like, oh, what's wrong with Jeremy? And my mom was like, nothing. And my brother's like, wow, he's crying. He's like, ignore him. And that's why I've, whenever I'm in like super stressful situation or like I'm having a big fight with someone, I emotionally shut down. As that's a way for me to cope stemming from my childhood. Are you emotionally stressed right now? A little bit. You guys won't tell me the name of the podcast. But... Whose fault was that? That's mine. And we shouldn't punish someone even more just because they made a mistake, right? <laughs> but mistakes do have consequences, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's, I guess, how we're going to wrap up this episode of the podcast. So, uh, Toast, thank you so much for joining us. It was um, quite a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me on 
Derailed episode one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's where we'll end things. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, this has been uh, the OTV podcast revamp. I don't want to say derailed for you because I don't want to give you any answers yet. But uh, for those listening, we will be doing a bonus episode with Mr. Toast here uh, for our Patreon, um, where maybe we'll talk about the Philippines or something because we did we did go there. Um, any any final words to say? Well, like I said a lot. Um, most important takeaway is you shouldn't kiss girls unless you have their consent. I'm sorry, Tim, for ignoring you in high school. And I apologize to Nickelodeon for talking badly about the Avatar actors. I'm sorry that you guys didn't do a better job at picking them. And fuck you, Dan Schneider. And whatever your name is, Peck. Yep. Brian Peck. See you in two weeks. Bye. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.